Silver Battery Buzz. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ainsley Insights, brought to you by Ainsley Bullion, Ainsley Crypto, and the Gold and Silver Standard, as the Ainsley Group celebrates 50 years. Today, we welcome back Alex, who wrote an extremely interesting article today about new developments in the battery space involving silver that have all of us, particularly Tesla drivers like myself, very excited about the potential. How are you going today, Alex? I'm going very well. Um, I have decided to steer away from politics this week. We had Macron arresting the lead of Telegram. We have RFK joining Trump. We have the thumping late uh, liberal victory in Northern Territory, yen carry trade, Chinese bond melt up, and any war on any continent from what I can figure out. So time <laughs> to talk about silver again. I'm over it. Which is fair enough. And look, you're over it in style because this article really spoke to me today. As I said, I might have a sort of vested interest here in in, in what's coming with this technology because it sounds amazing. Can you start us off just telling us the differences? Because we're all familiar with lithium-ion batteries or familiar enough. We've, we've seen them around. We've heard the term. Now Samsung coming out with this solid state battery based on silver, that sounds like a real game changer. Yeah, so um, lithium batteries are basically ions in a solution, so they're liquid. And this battery is solid, so it's silver in a carbon um, framework, I guess. So it, that makes it solid. So if you think about, um, I don't know, a liquid versus a, a solid, a rock versus dirt, you know that the rock is always heavier than the dirt because it's more compressed. That's what a solid ultimately becomes. So um, bang for buck or bang for weight, this is a, a better battery. Um, and a lot of the issues that we have with lithium iron batteries right now, you know, the, the spontaneous combustion, <laughs> um, apparently we have 10 to 12,000 fires a year in waste recycling just in Australia with uh, mm. lithium batteries burning. Uh, it's not a technology right now that was worked through the life cycle, I don't believe lithium ion batteries the life cycle is not worked out handling was not worked out and it's caused a lot of issues in the fact that it is basically a liquid so if you've got this new technology as you've described sort of solid state involving silver improvements in both performance and safety by the sounds of that is it ultimately down to the unique properties of silver that that allow it to do that is is that what the the difference is here well, I mean, silver is the most um, conductive material. Everything is measured against silver. So lithium ranks well below silver. And to put it in perspective, silver is 100, copper is 97, which is pretty good. Gold is 76. Everything else is underneath them. So that's that's how everything is ranked and compared to silver. Um, because it conducts electricity well, it means it conducts heat so electricity won't build up the heat within so within the system. Right. So it's both thermal and electrical um, conductive, and it's the best element in the world. Where things have gone wrong, I believe, in the last uh, couple of decades is everyone's tried to get away from silver, but silver's particularly malleable. Like you can make it really thin and still work because of its conductivity. Um, but it's expensive compared to things like copper and lithium, probably not to lithium anymore, but to copper. Um, so people have always tried to get away with it rather than trying to keep it in a system and make it less. So by putting it in a carbon framework, um, carbon is also conductive. It, it allows um, less silver and I, I'm assuming uh, cheaper because there's less silver in it. And therefore, hopefully, um, it'll get picked up this time and people won't try and swap it for copper again. I, I can understand why, and I suppose that leads to my next question. If we see a huge increase in demand, we've talked about a long time, uh, for a long time, the shortage that seems to be around in the silver market. Uh, does this ultimately mean there's potential for much higher prices? If we're talking about that supply and and what's actually available, if it starts being redirected, because I know certainly it's been used a lot in solar panels, but if we also start seeing it being used a lot in batteries, is the moving variable there the price that it ends up much higher because it ultimately is a better product? Is that how you view it, or does the price factor potentially hold it back? I mean, that's what you're probably arguing it has in the past. 
Well, um, the, these were some points that I made with my um, business partner, Boyne, the other day, uh, today, who uh, pointed me in the direction of this article. So with silver, silver is a byproduct. There are very few silver mines. There are silver reserves that are not being mined right now because there's no drive into it. So what it should what should happen is if this is this starts to be adopted quickly, the price will go up. Um, eventually mines will come on, but this is such a huge demand. Price should stay up. It will drop inevitably, just like lithium did. There was a huge spike. Now we're down a bit because yep. there's yep. more mines open up. Um, but ultimately, uh, this material becomes recyclable too. It, it'll be easy to recycle because it's um, got less uh, crazy impurities within the battery. It's a simpler battery ultimately to a lithium ion one. Um, it'll be easy to recycle because it's transportable. It won't spontaneously combust. Um, it's got a whole heap of advantages which improve the life cycle, eventually improve not improve the pricing, but it will spike, but it'll stabilise at some point, which is not terrible, provided there's not world politics like we've got going on right now to spike the price on its own. So, I mean, that inevitably happens anyway. So, uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it does to price and how quickly it's adopted. Uh, the paper was first written in March from Samsung uh, and everyone's getting excited about it six months later. So it takes a while for things to to move through everyone's heads. But this is a potentially a better battery for cars. Um, we won't be hearing about the the car parks that have got twenty cars burnt down because someone's lithium battery just blew up. So it's a whole heap better, I would say, environmentally. And. And that is a really interesting point as well, because I wonder, we've certainly seen the green revolution, you know, pushes pushes by governments to focus on more sustainable um, and simply better technology. If this is fitting, ticking all those boxes, does that potentially help in terms of this challenge that really is there about widespread adoption? Because if, if it is more expensive, well, the trade-off that we get is a better product overall, all those other benefits, do governments potentially help that by subsidizing in some way? Or, you know, does it does it make it better from both the production side but also market acceptance side that you start to see um a joint message coming out that this is the way to go potentially? Well, I mean, you'd hope so. Recycling's better, safety's better. Um, potentially, you know, everyone talks about when you used to buy a fridge, it had lasted for 20 years. Now you buy a fridge and it lasts five years. Well, to think about that in the context of this battery, this battery is solid, a lithium ion one is liquid. Which one do we think is going to last longer? Mm. So um, the life cycle, if it may end up being a more expensive battery because of its inputs, but hopefully it'll last a lot longer than what we've got going on with the lithium ion batteries right now. Um, but as we've seen over time, quite often people just go for the cheapest option rather than the life cycle. So it's the consumer's own fault that we've ended up in this predicament, I would say. Um, but hopefully, yes, if the government starts promoting it and it does work and it is better and the life cycle's better, I would be hopeful that it, it gets pretty wide adoption. And what was most exciting for me in the article was when it was pointing out the current sort of looking at that initial version, the specs were really good. So if you think about what happens, it's like the first version of anything is never as good as it gets, particularly when it comes to batteries. We know they keep getting better and better as the technology around it improves. That's actually very exciting for the potential down the road if it does start getting some adoption of where it does end up. And that's probably how you see those savings in cost as well um, because yeah. less silver achieving more with it just tech that's what technology does right drives down those costs. Hope, yeah look at those chips that just keep getting smaller and smaller and you can't even see them under microscopes anymore um i mean how how far does your tesla go with charging right now well it, it was about the limits you put you're sort of saying 800 k's i mean mine probably doesn't quite do that now it's a little bit older but that would be about the limit that you get and you were sort of saying that off the bat with these new batteries so i can well, imagine no, they're, they're actually saying for the size it's almost double that of a lithium. Like it's really yeah, impressive. Right. Okay. Right off the and bat. That's, 
and that and that solves a lot of problems, particularly in countries like Australia. That's always been an issue with the electric vehicles that you go, well, we're, we're such a big country. You've, you've got to be able to drive further than just down to the shops. You've got to be able to have those really large distances. So if you were getting double what you can now, that that solves a lot of problems. Well, I think just for the size, I think they achieved, I think they were talking about 800 kilometres, which is what you're saying, but just the size of it would be smaller. So it's more scalable. Very exciting. I'm very excited for one. <laughs> so I'm very glad you took us down this path today. And we leave all so that, you know, all, all, all of that other stuff you oh, mentioned right. at the start. We'll still be here next week, no doubt, oh. as we get close to that all important US elections. But for the time being, this was a great article. Yeah, really appreciate that today. And I'm sure everyone watching will as well. So thank you for your work on that, Alex. Oh, well, thank you for a happy story. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. We'll chat again soon.